Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about creating and analyze a population pyramid, otherwise sometimes known as a population profile. By the end of today, I'd like you to be able to answer these two questions. Identify the different parts of a human population pyramid, and how can a population pyramid help to model and predict population growth? So if we're looking at a future in a country, we might want to know what's going to happen in that country. The first thing we're going to do is basically follow these four steps. We're going to look at where to find some data. We're going to process that data. We're going to set up a population pyramid model, and then we're going to create the, the graph or fill in that data. So the um, website that I'm selecting for today is from the U.S. Census Bureau. And I'd like to take a moment to just go over what that website offers with you. I'll list this website underneath the, underneath the video for you so you can come and access this yourself. Um, basically, if we look at the Census Bureau information, it's pretty easy to navigate. Um, over here, you've got a lot of interesting statistics you can look at. In order to set up our own population pyramid, I want to look at the five-year age group. Um, I'm going to select our current year, and we're going to be looking at Afghanistan. Once you do that, you can hit submit, and it's going to bring you uh, basically a chart um, full of data, full of information that can show you a lot of statistics about that population in 2013. If we go back to our, our own setup here, uh, you'll notice that uh, essentially I've got a few big things here. The, the major numbers you need to know when calculating the populations are you need to know the total population and then we're basically going to break down that the age groups are broken down into um, five-year age groups here and then what is the population of each of the males and the females so what we want to do is basically continue um, making our own data table and we're going to look at the percent of males versus the percent of females and we're going to look at that for each uh, each segment or each year so let's just do uh, one or two of these quickly together and then we'll fill in the, the rest of the chart if you look quick I'm going to bring up my calculator and um, you can kind of see if you can still see these numbers back here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number of males in the population so 2,516,706 simply divided by the total number of people in the population that year. So in Afghanistan, there were 31,108,077 people. So the males in the population are 0 0.08. If you want, you can multiply it by 100 to give you your percentage. So you basically have 8.0%. So of the, the baby boys in this population, we have a population of 8.0% of that entire population are baby boys. The girls you can see are gonna be close to that. Let's just again calculate and see uh, what the actual number is. So we do 2,437,988 divided by the total population of 31 million. 108,077. So the girls' population again is going to be 7.8%. So in here we're going to write in 7.8%. Now, what we can do is fill this in all the way down. I mean, you can start to see uh, as people get older, you can see the numbers are shrinking. In fact, if we get really, really old, up to the people that are um, above age 100 in Afghanistan, We've got um, four men and six women in Afghanistan. They're estimated to be over 100. Um, once we have this information, we're actually going to start to set up our population pyramid model. Okay, so this is going to be a fairly uh, a fairly simple process. Um, these population models are pretty basic, and they're essentially like a graph where we've got an x-axis and we have a y-axis um, and we've got a y-axis let me see how straight I can do this oops okay and um, on this side we usually say that this is going to be males and on this side we say this is going to be females um, and then when we set this up we want to start by by putting each 
section in here is going to represent a different age group. So as we're building this chart, uh, it's going to go all the way up. And as we said, this was 0 to 4. This was 5 to 9. This is 10 to 14, and so on. So you go all the way up here until we get to the, um, you know, 90 to 94 group and the 95 to 100 group and so on. And then we have the 100 plus. So I just want to basically show you the setup. On the bottom, we essentially have a, uh, a midpoint here. This is essentially the percent of the population. So this is the percent of the total on the bottom. And uh, we're basically going to go even increments. Uh, we saw that the babies were the biggest group at about 8%. So we're going to break this up into at least going out to 8%. So if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we should label each of our percentages going out this way. And we'll do the same on the other side. And then basically all we're going to do is we're going to go up and you need to look at the number you filled in here. So for the boys it was 8%. For the girls it was 7.8% in that first bracket. And we're going to fill this into our population chart. So again for the boys we go all the way over to 8%. For the girls it's going to be 7.8% so just a little short of 8. And we're going to carry that over and we're going to fill in that bar. Now, um, I'm not going to spend the time drawing in this entire chart. We'll look at the answer down here. But once you fill this in, you're basically, for Afghanistan, you're going to get a graph that kind of staircases up and slowly goes from this wide out area to here all the way up to just a few people living at 100. Same thing with the girls. It's going to be all the way up to here with a few people living at 100. Now, because of the shape of the pyramid, um, you know, we can learn a lot of things. We can tell a lot of things by, typically these pyramids are more in developing regions, so this would be a less economically developed country. Um, the, the, the pyramid shape here, again, the fact that we have more of a pyramid shape usually indicates that we have a high birth rate when compared to the death rate. If we have a shape that looks more like a skyscraper or it's a bit more square, it usually means that we have a similar um, birth to death rate. So in this case, we've got this uh, more pyramid structure. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about, so here's the basically the uh, overall answer. Now, notice this is another way to set this up. This is the population in millions of people. So this isn't a percentage, but it's simply the actual number of people living at each age at, a, at each age bracket. This doesn't indicate percentage, but it shows you the actual number of people in the population. Uh, you can see that Afghanistan is currently, so in 2013, they're currently experiencing a bit of a baby boom. Notice that um, this difference here, this bar here, is much more of a, uh, a big outbreak in this space. The other thing that could explain that though is they could have a uh, high death rate for newborn babies. So that could be another explanation that most babies don't live past the age of four and that they actually die off. Um, you can see overall in Afghanistan, if we go from 2013 to 2033, we have this idea called population momentum. Population momentum is that uh, in 30 years, so if we take a look at the, these guys right here, the 10 to 14 year olds, in 30 years, they are going to be, or sorry, in 20 years, they're gonna be the 30 to 34 year old age, age bracket. So these, 30, these 10 to 14 year olds are going to move up to this space and they're now going to occupy this level here. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they were approximately, um, you know, just close to 2 million people. So you would expect, yes, some of them have died off, but it's still close to 2 million, 2 million people. And the new age bracket, you have to really notice the scale here, went from 2.4 million, and now we're getting out past 3 million. So the overall um, growth rate of Afghanistan is that it's increasing. And the 
the population overall is increasing. So the growth rate is um, some positive growth rate and Afghanistan is a growing country. If we go back to our website, the original one that we were looking at, we can take a look at some of the demographics and we can get a demographic overview of Afghanistan just to kind of confirm um, what we're looking at with our population pyramids or our profiles. And you can see that uh, Afghanistan currently has a growth rate of about 2.3% and that's not going to change a lot. So as we had said before, um, if we want to consider the doubling time of that country, it's going to double in less than 35 years. Uh, we can look at their birth rate compared to their uh, death rate. So the um, birth rate is pretty high. Again, for most countries, we're significantly less than this, that their birth rate is 39 and their death rate is 14. So you could go back and calculate this um, growth rate overall if, if you use some of the basic calculations we learned in the previous lecture. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for tuning in.